Ever since the boom of cyberpunk fiction, be it in the neon streets of Blade Runner or the chromed up world of Shadowrun, writers have always been fascinated with the idea of digital currencies. Bits of data with as much, if not more, worth than a dollar and backed by nothing more than code. It was in January 2009 that fiction would become reality as the Bitcoin network would emerge and the first issuance of it would go to Satoshi Nakamoto. Ever since, this digital currency has taken off and taken the world by storm. However, for many the question remains, how does Bitcoin work? To help explain, think of this. You have two people, Sarah and Kyle. Sarah wants to give Kyle some money because he helped her with a task. To pay him, she opens up what's called a wallet app, inputs how much she wants to send Kyle, and then scans his account number. After that, she hits send, and Kyle has some money show up in his account. Pretty simple, right? On the user end, yes. But behind the scenes, there's a whole lot more happening. You see, Bitcoin is what's called a decentralized flat currency, meaning that no one central system manages it, and the currency itself only has worth based on the amount we believe it's worth. So, without a bank to manage all of these transactions you're probably wondering, how do we know who has what? Well, that's simple. Anyone who wants to can just maintain a ledger on the Bitcoin network. In fact, we call these people maintainers and they're the ones who help make this all happen. So, if these maintainers can get money from managing the ledgers, what's in place to keep them from manipulating the books? Well, the fact that the only way for more Bitcoin to be added to the system is for a miner to solve a special math problem generated when the transaction was detected by the network. This math problem is used to help create consistency and honesty between all the ledgers, since it incorporates past solutions into solving the problem. Thus, the ledgers that have more solutions are able to solve the problem faster than those ledgers with less solutions, which in turn keeps any new person from just jumping in to exploit the system. The other aspect of consistency and control is that though the miners add more Bitcoin into the network through solving these special math problems, there's a limit on the amount of Bitcoin that can ever be added into the system, that limit being 21 million. But that's a far off state, as it's estimated that the limit won't be hit until the year 2040. So, going back to our example, when Sarah sent money to Kyle, she was in fact sending a message to the Bitcoin network, which in turn updated all the ledgers being operated. However, there's one more piece to this whole system, and that's how it keeps people from committing fraud with your account, which is where we come to the piece that helps keep all our wallets safe, cryptography. It's a process in which information is kept secret through encryption, a fancy word for disguising one piece of information behind another piece of information. With Bitcoin, this is fundamental to the security of its currency. You see, every message you send to the network generates a special digital signature and is encrypted using a private key matched to the recipient only. This safeguards the information as it goes to the network and then to the recipient, where upon arrival, the recipient uses their personal public key to accept the message. It's this whole process that makes it impossible to repeat the same transaction because any new message or change generates an entirely new digital signature and private key. All in all, Bitcoin is a rather secure system and an interesting one. With numerous security features, it's found a way to take the world by storm and even inspire a trend of smaller cryptocurrencies. But it does make me think what will come next in economic innovation? And are we really that far away from the sort of futures sci-fi has always depicted? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, please post them in the comments section below. Until next time, from all of us here at Question, thank you and farewell.